some of your plants are going to be annual. Some of them are going to be perennials. Some of them can handle the weather in the zone that you're in. Some of them cannot. Hi, welcome to Lilies and Tomatoes, your go-to place for simple and practical tips and tricks on how to start a garden all the way through how to use what you grow. This is from my live class that I teach on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays on Facebook. If you'd like to attend a live class or ask me a question, check out the link in the description. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to my basement garden or my basement workshop. <laughs> it's been a long day. Today we're going to be talking about overwintering. What is it? Uh, how do you do it? And uh, why do you need to know about it? If we have not met, my name is Quincy Adams and I want to help you grow some of your own food in a small space on a budget. Let's get started. Okay, so overwintering, it's kind of just a catch all term. It's Generally, it's how your plants respond to winter weather and what you're going to do about it. So there's not like a strict definition on that. I just looked across like 10 blogs and no, no definition. And I've just always used it to define what I'm doing for the winter uh, across all of my plants and it's different. So what I'm going to do today is tell you the five different ways that you can overwinter and then i'm going to also tell you why you want to overwinter um so first let's get into why why you want to overwinter so um some of your plants are going to be annuals some of them are going to be perennials some of them can handle the weather in the zone that you're in some of them cannot some of them would be able to handle the zone that you're in if they were in the ground but if they're in a container they may not so it's going to be about how you prepare your garden for the winter so you can get a jump start on the spring. So there's a couple reasons. One, and, and this is why, one is so you can get an earlier harvest. So if you're planting things over the winter that can handle the weather outside, um, like kales and, and cabbage and those kinds of things, then even if you, if you get a fall harvest then the plant's gonna stop growing, but it's not going to die generally. And then it'll start growing again in the spring and then you'll have stuff to harvest in early spring before anyone else has even started their garden yet. So that's another, that's one reason. That's what I mean by get a jump start on the spring. Another reason is so you don't have to replant everything. Cause like going through all of the effort uh, of planting out an entire garden and then have to start over every year is disheartening at best. So it's not something that everybody wants to do. And when you're starting planning for multiple seasons, like instead of just planting for the spring season, the summer sp season, you start thinking about it in cycles, then there's always something to do to prepare yourself for the next cycle. And if you can keep yourself from having to replant everything, that's a huge plus. Uh, the third thing that, the third reason why you want to overwinter is to prevent repurchasing. So you don't have to rebuy everything every year because that gets really expensive. So imagine if you were doing, say you're doing plant starts and you do plant starts, a full garden full of plant starts every year, that gets expensive. Or say you're doing something like sweet potatoes and you grow your sweet potatoes and you get your harvest and everything's great. But instead of buying more sweet potato slips the next year, you can, Take, do some preventative maintenance and make sure you get your free slips for next year. And I will tell you how in just a minute. And then um, for root crops and other um, cold hardy vegetables, they often taste sweeter after they've been through at least one frost. So you want to overwinter them outside so they can be exposed to that first frost and then they taste better. And um, you get a, just a whole new like flavor profile from your carrots and your kales and your cabbages. So that's, um, that's four reasons why you want to overwinter. And now I'm going to tell you the five ways that you can't overwinter. And one of these ways we've already talked about. So the first way to overwinter something is to bring it inside. And we talked about this at the beginning of the month about preparing your space and thinking about what you need to do to bring a plant inside for the winter. So bringing something inside is the first way that you can't overwinter. The second way you can overwinter is to do nothing. If a plant is perennial in your zone, then you probably don't have to do anything. You can just leave it as is. You might want to do some cleanup, prune it back down to a couple inches above the soil. But um, some, some plants don't need, to, don't need any maintenance. The third way that you can overwinter 
is to mulch. So some plants that can mostly handle your weather but need a little extra help, they're gonna need some extra mulch. An easy way to mulch is just use the fall leaves and just cover them up. It gives them a little bit of extra insulation for the winter so they can come out on the other side of the spring. The fourth way that you can overwinter is to cover your plants with some kind of plastic or fabric. So that can be either just something as simple as laying down plastic or ag fabric to building a hoop, or um, you can put them inside of a, uh, an unheated hoop house or a heated greenhouse. They're, like The range on that is, is vast and wide, and we're not gonna get into all of that today. But um, overwintering with a little bit of protection will definitely keep your plants going for longer. It'll give you longer harvests and uh, it'll definitely help you get started earlier in the spring. The fifth way to overwinter your garden is to plant things that will grow next year. So by that, I mean things like certain kinds of onions, garlic, um, fava beans. You plant them in the fall, they get started, and then they go dormant in the winter time, and then they do most of their growing in the early spring, and then you harvest them in the late spring to summer. So um, we're definitely gonna be planting garlic and more onions because mine died. Um, but that's something easy. And actually I went to the grocery store today and I was like, I wonder if they have some fava beans at the grocery store. Like, that was definitely gonna plant some grocery fava beans, but they didn't have any. I got some pinto beans and some white beans, but no fava beans. All these you're slipping. But anyway, <laughs> those are that's what it's meant by overwintering. So it's not like one specific thing that you do. It's a way that you're prepping your things for the winter. So something like if you're in a warm-ish zone, not super warm, but if you're in a warm-ish zone like I am, zone B, last year I planted my kale out and it didn't need any protection. So like it got snowed on, it got rained on, it froze several times and then thawed, and then it kept uh, growing in the early spring. So that is what I'm gonna do with a lot of my kale. Um, but other things need a little bit of protection. So something that I did, which turned into a happy accident, was I had potatoes last year in grocery baskets, or grocery baskets, in laundry baskets, and in my milk crates. And the cutworms just did a number on them and like sawed off all the plants and I didn't get any potatoes. And I was sad, but I left the little teeny tiny baby potatoes that were in there in the dirt and just planted greens on the top level of the surface of the soil. And then I was surprised in February to see that I had potatoes growing and those containers because I didn't think that they were gonna grow. But now that I know that they will grow, I'm gonna be doing that every year. So some of my potatoes will get planted in the fall in the deep levels of the soil in my deep containers. Then I will be planting greens across the top so I can enjoy the greens out of the greenhouse and then come early spring, I will have a jump start on my potatoes because again, this year, the ants dug up, like they got into my containers and they killed my plants. So the ants would not let me be great this year. I only got a couple of my own potatoes. They were freaking delicious though, but um, the ants would not let me be great this year. So just to recap you guys on the four reasons why you want to overwinter, that's for earlier spring harvests. That's so you don't have to replant everything. So you don't have to rebuy everything. And so you can get chill hours on your root crops. And then the five reasons why or how you overwinter, and that's gonna be bringing stuff inside, do nothing, mulch, cover with plastic or fabric, and um, plant things that, we, that you're gonna grow for next year. So we will be getting into the other four that we have not discussed more in depth later because it gets complicated quickly. But um, if you wanna circle back to that other um, class we did about bringing things inside, that was, I believe, September 3rd. And you can check that out about, that's how you prep your area inside and think about what you need to put, bring your plants inside. And depending on your first frost date, if you've got summer plants that need to come inside like peppers, then you want to bring them in before your actual first frost date. You don't want to be surprised and find out, oh no, it died. You want to make sure that you're ready for it and you have your area prepped and you've got time to like prune it before you bring it inside so it can acclimate to your weather. If you guys have any questions, drop them below. I don't see any questions right now, so we'll let you go for tonight. 
And then on Saturday, we will talk about garlic because I've been getting questions on garlic and I've already started doing my research on that. So we'll talk about what garlic, what type of garlic you should grow depending on where you live and um, just some information about garlic because garlic is awesome and it's delicious and has a lot of medicinal properties. So if you're not thinking about growing some garlic, you should. That's all for tonight. Bye.